example of that moving from what I would call the cultivation of something to the checking of something. Of course, we do that. We do the meditation because we want, we have a certain idea of why we do the meditation, to help us to be more quiet, more clear, more open, more stable. But to, to look more at it in a way over a longer period of time than every two minutes kind of checking, is this meditation working? So personally, I think the most important effect of the meditation is what I would call the releasing effect. It's just by cultivating, actually over time, we release our tension, our holding. And this is a very subtle effect. So I think it takes a little time to notice that it makes an effect. And often you see it more in your daily life than you would see it in meditation. But I would say over time, the meditation help us to diminish the speed, the length, and the intensity of our habits. Because generally, this is what is blocking us, our habits. And in a way, when we sit in meditation, it's like nearly like a revelator, that we sit in meditation, in a way, we're doing very little. And then as we sit in meditation, we start to see, I have all these thoughts. I have all these feelings. I have all these sensation. And sometimes you might think that it's kind of like the meditation is creating them. Not, not. It's not, not creating anything. But it's revealing something. It's revealing, actually, how we think most of the time, how we feel most of the time how we physically experience ourselves most of the time. And often it's very habitual. It's kind of become very habitual, so it kind of nearly fixes us in a certain stream of thought, certain stream of feeling, or certain stream of sensation. And so to see that the meditation is not an eradication of these habits, but it's more um, a dissolution of the habit itself. So you can go back to the creative functioning of the thought, the feeling, the sensation. I think it's important to see we're not trying to stop something, but actually we're trying to create a space in which the functioning of the human being can be more creative can come from a more stable and open place than an agitated and confused place. So what we do in meditation is we cultivate concentration and looking deeply. So there is these two elements to the meditation. Concentration, focusing, and looking deeply, experiential inquiry. And this is what is interesting, is that in a way, the idea, the main idea of the meditation is that by cultivating concentration and looking deeply, we actually dissolve the obstacle to our wisdom and compassion. So we are not, in a way, creating something else. But it's more that we are dissolving removing, but more dissolving, the power of something which, which stop from us being more creative, to have kind of having more manifesting our potential for wisdom and compassion. So in a way, it, it's, it's not that we're producing something. It's more that actually by just coming back to these two elements, cultivating the concentration, the inquiry, we're removing the power of the habits which actually often are what limits, kind of, kind of hold us in such a way that it restricts the wisdom and the compassion that we can manifest and develop. And so I would say that this concentration and looking deeply help us to develop, to uncover a creative awareness we could call it a creative mindfulness, because nowadays uh, mindfulness has become more well-known 
than awareness. Suddenly mindfulness has taken off. And, uh, but it's very important to see that mindfulness as a term actually is a translation of a Buddhist term sati, S-A-T-I. And that term was translated as mindfulness in the 1800s, as mindfulness because of the Bible. But awareness means the same thing. It's just now, nowadays it's mindfulness is a buzzword. <laughs> so I'll use it a little. But when I say mindfulness of awareness, basically for me it is the same thing. I'm not uh, talking of two different things. So concentration. So concentration is about focusing. So it's called samatha in the early Buddhist language, S-A-M-A-T-H-A, -A, samatha. And samatha actually means two things. It means the, what you have to do, which is to focus. And actually, it means to be calm. So the effect of it. That's why often we have a problem with the cultivation and effect, because the so, same word refers to both the cultivation of it and the effect of it. So here, if we look more at the cultivation of it, it's focusing. And what is interesting with focusing, with concentration, is that a lot of people, a lot of the time when they do meditation, they say, I cannot concentrate. Because they feel that if they are <coughs> asked to watch the breath, they can stay with the breath for a few seconds, a minute at the most, and then they think of something else. And then they have to come back, and then they think of something else. So one, if one does meditation, one has the impression that one is very distractible and, not, and seems to have less concentration ability. But what I would say is that actually, in daily life, we have a great ability to concentrate. And I would say, actually, we have too great an ability to concentrate. Because often in daily life, we become obsessive. When we become obsessive about thought, a feeling, a problem, or whatever else, we cannot stop thinking about this. So like there, you have extreme concentration. You don't have any problem with concentration there. The problem is that you concentrate possibly not in a positive way. And this is the thing, that when we talk of concentration in meditation, is a very specific type of concentration. It's not that obsession that often is the concentration we generally cultivate in our daily life. Because often when we concentrate too much in daily life, on a thought, a feeling, a sensation, or a sound, or a word, we become overwhelmed and caught, and we are oblivious to anything else. We cannot think of anything else. Even if we try to, we cannot. So in a way, what is a meditative type of concentration? What do we do? When we try to concentrate in meditation, I think it's very important to see it doesn't mean that we become obsessed by the breath, or by the body scanning, or by listening, or whatever method we use. But it means that we rest our attention in an object in our experience, and that object becomes like an anchor. So the concentration in meditation as an anchoring is an anchoring device. It's to anchor us. So personally, I would say that in meditation, you have two types of concentration. You have the exclusive concentration and inclusive concentration. Exclusive concentration is when you are told to focus on the breath and not to do anything else whatsoever. So you basically have to get rid of the thought, not hear the sounds, and just focus 150% on the breath. And this type of meditation can lead, actually, to deep meditative states. But 
this type of meditation is not very helpful in daily life. Because to do th 